Another day, another suspension in the NFL. The latest is for Bill defensive tackle Marcel Darius, who is suspended four games for another violation of the NFL substance abuse policy the team announced Tuesday. Darius testing positive for marijuana as first reported by NFL Network and confirmed by our Adam Schefter. In a team statement, the bill said his behavior was, quote, unacceptable. The bills are now subject to a steep fine based on the NFL's remittance policy. And uh, Bill's head coach, Ryan, is now his second season into Buffalo. Stephen A., is this a reflection of him, this situation? Of who? Of Rex Ryan. So Bill's head coach, Rex well, Ryan, in his degree, second yes. year that there's another to suspension. Some, to, to some degree, yes. And usually I'm not one to say that. Marcel Darius is a grown man. Um, and, and he's idiotic for putting himself in a position where he's cost himself uh, uh, more than a million dollars uh, and, and four games. He's hurt his team. He's hurt his own wallet. I ain't never seen a joint that cost over a million dollars, uh, but evidently maybe I need to look for it. Maybe I need to start doing something because e evidently it's, it's, it's so potent. It, it makes you feel so good. I mean, my Lord, a joint worth more than a million dollars. Congratulations, Marcel Darius. That's just he's not an idiot, but his actions were idiotic, if you can understand where I'm coming from but having said all of that it does get to a point where you're looking at Rex Ryan and it's because of Rex Ryan's history you know known as a players coach known as somebody that knows how to galvanize the troops known as somebody who's so relatable so personable that you'll walk through a wall for him well evidently when it comes to the Marcel Darius's of the world uh, or Carlos Williams of the world and others you know you might walk through a wall for him but your damn sure ain't gonna stop smoking weed because of him <laughs> so now we've got ourselves a problem if you're Rex Ryan Rex Ryan last year went eight and eight they underachieved more importantly they under achieved because of their defense they weren't doing that bad they had 54 sacks the year before they dipped to 21 a 33 point drop from 54 to 21 sacks in Rex Ryan's first year why because Rex Ryan came in there wanted to be boy genius and instead of tweaking but relatively leaving in place what was working he made the decision that wholesale changes were, were needed so Mario Williams instead of being an edge rusher you got him dropping back in the coverage compromise his proud as a defender now he's in Miami let's see what he does then no excuse for him being lackadaisical with his effort but the frustration clearly was evident playing under Rex Ryan so you lose some of that cachet when you can't get a guy that's a former number one overall pick to come out there and play for you and play hard for you if you're Rex Ryan Carlos Williams doing the same thing then you turn around after you doing all of that now you got Marcel Darius who's primarily at fault here he's primarily culpable but nevertheless, it does throw some shade under this notion that everybody will do anything to appease Rex Ryan if you play for him. He's losing his cachet. There are five consecutive years that this man has missed the playoffs as a head coach in the NFL, one of 32 jobs in this country, one of 32 premier jobs. He's one of them. He has one of them. Five straight years, he's been outside of the playoffs looking in, Five straight years, he's come up short. But last year was the first time that the defensive brilliance of Rex Ryan was brought into question. Now that you got Tyrod Taylor and you got Sammy Watkins and you got LaShawn McCoy and you've got an offensive unit in place to make some noise, this season rides on how effective and efficient Buffalo's defense is going to be. Marcel Darius getting himself suspended is a huge blow in that direction. And even though he's primarily culpable, you cannot ignore what is going on with Rex Ryan because clearly the impact he is supposed to have, he is not having. I appreciate the point that, look, this is results-based. And if Rex isn't getting the results on the field, then the whole thing about him being a player's coach, you know, if that starts to not work, you're not getting the results on the field and the players are kind of getting in trouble, then you put him in a separate category of a hot seat category, let's say. I appreciate that point. Um, and, and there's always the issue with players, coaches. How much discipline will there really be? But if you blame Rex Ryan for this kind of thing, and even before I even say that, I have to say this every time this weed issue comes up. Uh, why is it substance abuse? Because uh, 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 an amount of marijuana was found in his system, it's substance abuse necessarily. What if it's medical use? What if it's recreational use? If he used it once or twice, that's abuse. Now, I do agree, you're getting fined 1.85 million. Maybe you got a problem. Maybe you don't need to smoke the weed. But even the term substance abuse here 
is misleading. That aside, if Rex Ryan gets blamed for this sort of thing, you brought up a couple guys not available to the Steelers this year, Stephen A., Mart uh, 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 Martavis Bryant and Le'Veon Bell. Both, weeds, both weed suspensions right now. Mike Tomlin is as good a coach just about as it gets, right? You don't come any better than Mike Tomlin, and that's on Mike Tomlin's watch. As a matter of fact, if you want to point to an even better coach who's certainly not a player's coach, Bill Belichick. Chandler Jones had that instance, the incident with synthetic marijuana. Now, the difference with Chandler Jones and the New England Patriots is he was out the door like the next day they moved him. But Martavis Bryant's still on the team. Le'Veon Bell's still on the team. I know Mike Tomlin's had more on-field success, and I agree that gives him more equity in this matter. But if, if Rex Ryan gets some blame here, what about a guy like Mike Tomlin? Can I answer that question? I would hope, I would hope you would. Can I answer that question? Please. Mike Tomlin has been to two Super Bowls. He's won a Super Bowl championship. And the Steelers are pretty much a perennial playoff team. It stands a couple of seasons in Mike Tomlin's 10-year career there. Rex Ryan has not had a winning season since 2010. His record overall is 54 and 58. That is a 48% winning percentage. He's not winning. He's losing. And on top of it all, his players ain't stepping up to get it done for him off the field as well as on the field. I don't understand how you could even mention Rex Ryan in the same breath as Mike Tomlin and Bill Belichick. Normally, don't even get me started way, with Bill Belichick. I normally They're perennial wouldn't. title contenders, and he's got four titles. I normally wouldn't accept that. If you're making the claim that this kind of misbehavior by players is a bad reflection on Rex Ryan, then while we certainly agree Mike Tomlin gets the results, wouldn't you also say, and Mike Tomlin's my favorite active coach, but wouldn't you also say that Martavis Bryant and Le'Veon Bell's misbehavior in, this, in the exact same way reflects on Mike well, Tomlin in that well, way? Well, 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 Mad Max, you have to recall that when I went through my little soliloquy about this situation with Rex Ryan, I specifically said most of the culpability is on Marcel Darius. I said less of the culpability is on Rex Ryan, but it can't be escaped. Most of it is on the player. Most of it is on Martavis Bryant. Since Le'Veon Bell may very well be a second-time offender, definitely most of it is on him. And keep in mind, there had to be a few issues that transpired before you ultimately get suspended for the four games. So who knows how long this has been going on with any of these And players. then they know they're going to get tested said, again, too, of course. Right, that's right. But having, but having said all of that, at the end of the day, the reason why I can gloss over it and put it mostly on the actions of players in the case of Tomlin and Belichick is because they're clearly doing their job. What we're making the argument about Rex is that he's not doing his because he's not getting results in spite of the hiccups. If you're going to be a problem. player's coach, I, we agree about this. If you're going to be a player's coach and your players are going to misbehave, boy, you better win. And that's not what Rex Ryan's been doing recently. All right, let's leave it How there. How about that? We move on from substance abuse to fantasy abuse. That's what went down yesterday when First Take held our fantasy draft. We want you guys to weigh in at home on who had the best team. So here's a look at the teams right now. Stephen A. has Aaron Rodgers, Ezekiel Elliott, because you know he wanted to root for the Cowboys, and Julio Jones. I have Cam, Dez, and Antonio Brown, and Max has Andrew Luck, Todd Gurley, and ODB. So weigh in. We want to hear from you guys. And on a much more serious note, LeBron James didn't stop at the ESPYs with his comments on social change. We'll react to his latest comments and break them down after the break. Stay here.